So I've been using the Apple Vision Pro for a little bit over a week. And let me say, when this is a fantastic device, it's a computer literally strapped to your face. And I know a lot of people are wondering, is that as crazy as it sounds? And that's what we're gonna go over in this video, where we're gonna talk about three main things that really surprised me about my experience with the Vision Pro. Safari, and then we're gonna talk about media consumption, so music, movies, as well as landscapes, I think really brings it all together. We're gonna keep this a pretty short video, just gonna give you a quick overview about what my experience has been. So when you're using Safari on this machine, it's very similar if you had a MacBook or an iPad, I would say mostly a MacBook. This uses a browser experience. So you're not gonna find apps like YouTube or Netflix or Twitter to be native in the app store just yet. But what you will find is that all of these are supported, of course, through Safari through the browser. But how is that experience actually done? What's it like browsing using your eyes and your, your, your fingertips? It's pretty strange but I will be the first one or maybe the last one to say that it actually works. It works pretty well. When you're looking at YouTube videos, whether it's a music video or your favorite tech reviewer or just content on cars, it looks phenomenal. You can make it full screen, you can drag it, make it big or small as you need to, put the window everywhere, um, similar to how you could do with any other window in the Vision Pro. Uh, Twitter and TikTok and these type of scrolling apps, I would say you're used to on your phone scrolling. It doesn't feel too unnatural using the Vision Pro as well. Just pinching, dragging, pinch, drag. Very similar, the speed, you know, if you drag fast, it flies through the timeline. 4K video looks really good. It gives you the option when you're watching either on Twitter or on YouTube. Instagram, I haven't tried as much just because I don't want it necessarily in my face, um, but I can imagine the experience is pretty much the same. Now, I will say it's not a perfect viewing experience. There has been multiple occasions when I've looked at the wrong thing. I'm trying to pause the video and you know that the finder is very close to the, the bottom bar where you're gonna find your settings, uh, you know, go full screen. And at times I've ac accidentally skipped to the end of the video um, because of, I guess, like a miss eye direction or miss eye calibration. It happens sometimes, it's not the end of the world. Um, and most of the time works really well, especially if you have the headset on right, just saying that it's not perfect, still has some nitpicks. The second thing I wanna talk about is media. So let's say you have an iPhone. I'm gonna imagine that most viewers or people interested in the device are iPhone users. Even if you're not, um, you could take photos with the device that has these onboard cameras where you could take spatial video, as well as when I do screen recordings, so you're gonna see it as well that you're actually viewing what I see, which is pretty cool, not the highest, quality, but um, it works through pretty much the same. Photos and videos. So when you look at photos on this machine, I'll break this up per media type. My favorites are panoramas. Uh, I've taken a lot of old pictures with my phone stuff the years through iPhone 6, iPhone 8, um, all the way up to my iPhone 14. And these panoramics almost take you back in time or you can look left and right. It feels like you're actually there. Very immersive. Uh, videos, if you've ever seen those concerts with a lot of people just having their phone up, recording favorite artists, um, I kind of see why that is so important. You know, you're capturing a moment and reliving a concert on this thing. It almost takes you back to when you were there experiencing it with the crowd, feeling the music. Um, it's really almost a magical moment. And I think there's a lot of value there. If you're an Apple Music listener, then you can go to your videos and you could see some of your favorite artists blown up in this crazy size. And like, I would say the speakers, uh, down uh, facing speakers that this device has on it, they work really well. <laughs> they can definitely block out any incoming noise. I've had my wife call for me and I've missed it, which is a good and a bad thing. I definitely prefer the experience with AirPods in. Um, having them on transparent mode. I feel like I can hear a little bit more of my outside environment when I, when I go that approach. Uh, but what's really cool about the media is like I've never experienced watching some of the 3D content. So Disney and Apple partnered up um, for this device to, of course, make the consumer want it. And I think they've done a really good job. Disney Plus has a 3D collection of movies where you can watch movies like Avatar, Incredibles 2, um, Coco, Luca, some of the best Pixar films as, well as some of the best Marvel films in 3D. And it feels like you're rewatching this experience all over again from the jump. Um, like you've never seen it before. At least that's my experience. I, I love that, um, you know, 3D was a thing that came in the past and didn't work, it phased out. And I'm glad to see it's finally back. I love that immersive experience that this provides. And speaking of immersive experiences, there's no better thing to transition into 
than the landscape. So the landscapes are really brought it home for me um, for this device. So let's say you are on an airplane, you're on the toilet, um, or you're just in like a stationary area and you're watching your photos, your music videos, your content, your um, avatar in 3D maybe. There are these environments that are pre-built from Apple. If you've ever had an Apple TV, they're very similar where they show you almost like a wallpaper. Um, these are, I would call almost like a 3D wallpaper, but they're calling it landscapes environment where you can look left and right and you're either on the moon, you're in the mountains, you're in the beach, um, the water and the breeze, you can hear it. Um, very, it feels very real. One of the best things about that is that you can drag any of your windows into this space or you can turn it down, turn it up as, as you need to where it can completely block out everything in your viewing experience. And I think it's something that's very Apple-like, something that's very unique. And I think it actually enhances experience. You know, you're on an airplane, you just wanna like have your own home theater experience. And I think that's the most amazing thing about this device is its ability to be a home theater experience. Will this be worth it for years and years and years to come? I think so. If you're worried this is gonna be outdated, very soon. It really depends. There are a lot of improvements that has to happen to this device, but there are also things that this device does really, really, really well. And it focuses in on those. And I think if they keep that leverage, um, people will continue to buy this product and they'll continue to be satisfied. I'm satisfied. I'm still paying for it, but we'll, we'll worry about that later. Um, but that's all that I want to talk about. Hopefully you guys liked it. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll uh, talk to you guys in another video. And leave a comment, actually, what you're wondering about the device, and I'll do my best to make a video for you. And we'll just go from there. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, see you guys next time. Bye. All right, good.